and happy holidays. Welcome to Adventures with Alchemy's first ever, and hopefully first of many, Christmas episodes, specials, whatever. We're gonna make some of a couple of my favorite things that I just love to have during Christmas time, or anytime when it's actually cold because they're heavy. These are a uh, comfort food dish and a comfort food holiday drink. So let's get started with our food. We are gonna make one of my favorite potato dishes there is. Potatoes, holidays, cheese, creamy, mmm, the best, right? Well, potatoes au gratin is definitely one of my favorite dishes. This is a type of potatoes au gratin. Um, there's many, many, many ways to make this dish. Um, and this is just one other way. So we're gonna start by taking some gold potatoes. And we, of course, we peeled them and we have them sitting in water so they don't oxidize too fast. We are gonna take each potato, you're gonna set your mandolin to one eighth of an inch, one eighth. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna take our gold potatoes and this way you get a consistent slice, nice and thin. So I have six potatoes here and I have water in the bowl. So again, we're trying to keep our potatoes from oxidizing. You wanna go slow? Go slow, if you wanna be careful. You wanna wear a glove, that's also safe. Once you're comfortable, you get, you get used to it, you find a rhythm. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make roux, okay? Roux is flour that has been cooked in butter, okay? You have light roux, you have light brown roux, and then you have dark roux, okay? Or you can just say light brown and dark, either way. Um, it all depends on how long you cook it. Roux is traditionally used to thicken sauces. Um, and depending on the color of the sauce is depending on the color of the roux. Also, the darker, the more of a nuttier, toastier flavor you're gonna get. So yeah, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cup of flour. It's actually three quarters of a cup to be exact. And we're gonna take a uh, quarter block of butter. So, you know, like the full blocks, you know, like the regular ones, the squares, a quarter of that, one fourth of that. So take your butter. I'll let that bad boy render and melt. Now we may not end up using all this roux, you could always put it away and use it again for something else later. So we're making light roux in this case. You don't want to cook it too long. I'd say three to five minutes max. Just constantly moving it around. Again, if you let it sit in one place, it'll start to brown. It'll start to darken. And unless you want dark roux, you know, that's not what we're aiming for. Now, how do you know when it's ready? You'll smell it. You'll smell it. It goes from a uh, flowery butter smell to a very nutty smell. Also the color. You'll see it go from a very yellowish, uh, from the butter, of course, to a kind of lighter color before it gets darker. Now we're gonna let our roux cool so that it's ready for our sauce later. We're gonna take a little bit of milk. We're gonna take some roux. We're gonna take some, some flavors and we're gonna make magic, okay? So stay tuned and I'll see you in a minute. Our roux has cooled now. It is ready to go. So we have one liter of cold um, whole milk. All right, so let's begin by heating up our pan. I'm gonna put this at 375. So go ahead and let that heat up. Keep an eye on it. You don't want to burn your milk, okay? You don't wanna scald your milk, just get it to where the sides start to bubble a little bit and you see some movement going on. Just lower the heat a little bit and start adding a little roux and spices. Now, you don't have to add all of this, okay? Do it to taste. Everybody has different palates, okay? So what I like to do is I like to add little bits at a time. See what, what, what tastes good and what doesn't and you just never know. All right, we have salt. We have white pepper uh, instead of black pepper. Why? Because the sauce itself is white and just kind of going along with it. White pepper does have a slightly different flavor. You can use black pepper. Um, if you do that, I recommend using fresh ground pepper, okay? We have onion powder, we have garlic powder, and we have thyme, ground up uh, dry thyme. And of course we have our blonde roux. Okay, so now our milk is simmering. It's ready to go. So. Just take little bits at a time. Start seasoning, start seasoning to taste. Make sure you're smelling, make sure you're tasting as you go. You no, know, very important. A little bit of this white pepper. 
A little bit of time here. I'm going pinches at a time, just little pinches, okay? You can always add, you can never subtract. Remember the cheese we're gonna use is also gonna be added. We have a cup and a half of cheddar and a cup and a half of Monterey Jack. And uh, that's quite salty. So you don't wanna over salt this either, okay? So let's start adding our roux. And we're gonna start thickening this bad boy. Just again, little bits at a time. I'm gonna do like four little pieces about that size, little clumps about that size. And I'm gonna break them up before they go in. Probably gonna use more than that, but just for now, so we're you know, starting point. Now, don't over thicken this. Just because it doesn't turn thick right away after adding some roux, that doesn't mean to keep adding roux until it turns super thick, okay? You don't want that. Roux is a lot stronger than you think it is. It doesn't look like it does much in the beginning, but over time, like it, it, it just whoa, thickens things real quick. You don't need this much. You only need maybe like a quarter of that. In the end, it's gonna be like a creamy sauce, right? Um, but you don't want it creamy just yet. You want it to be slightly, just slightly before that because we're going to pour it into our potatoes in layers with cheese and it's all gonna to cook together. It's literally gonna become thicker as it cooks in the pan. We wanna gently stir to maintain the heat and melts that roux and blends that roux in there nicely. Now, if you wanna add some special kick or some special flavors to your potatoes al gratin, I recommend roasting some, some red or orange bell peppers, uh, maybe some yellow bell peppers or some jalapenos or um, even uh, some caramelized onions. All of those are fantastic to add in your layers. It's kind of like a potato lasagna is kind of what we're like, what we're gonna make here. Now, I'm making this for my kids uh, who are all very picky eaters. So I'm gonna make this very, very easy. Plus, I always believe that you should learn the base recipe first and then get fancy with it later. You know, what you like may not necessarily be what I like or what I like may not necessarily be what you like. So, you know, if you don't like bell peppers, don't use bell peppers. If you don't like jalapenos, don't use jalapenos. Use what you like, those flavors that particularly are, uh, that you are fond of. And yeah, go with that. Be fearless. Have fun. Try it all. Okay. So, our... Sauce is ready. I'm gonna turn off the heat here. As you can see, it's all in up. Coats the spoon. So we're gonna stir this a little more while it's cooling down. Try to get everything nice and combined. And as this cools down, it will thicken more, okay? Okay, so we have our Monterey Jack. We have our cheddar, How about a cup and a half of each. We have our sauce. We have our salt and pepper. And right behind me, we have the potatoes uh, that are in water, submerged. I'm gonna pull them out, we're gonna pat them dry, and we're gonna start making our layers. We're gonna begin by putting a layer of sauce down, then, a little, and then the potatoes, and then cheese, sauce, and repeat, okay? Take a little bit, you don't need a lot. What you want is to just line the pan. So we're just gonna put a little cheese on the bottom, a little sauce, a little cheese. I'm just gonna spread it around like this. Now, I'm looking at the cheese right now and I can tell you right away, we're gonna need a little bit more. So I would recommend actually doing two and a half cups of each, okay? So, we have sauce, we have cheese. Now let's put down some potato slices. As you can see, remember from our mandolin, we have our nice, thin, beautiful potato slices. And we're just going to layer them. I'm gonna put a layer of potatoes right over the top here. Maybe just the very tops of each one overlapping, just slightly. If you don't pat these potatoes down, then the water that's on them will get into the sauce and the cheese, everything that's gonna make it very watery and you don't want that. So try to pat them down the best you can. Next, a little bit of salt. I'm gonna season every layer. Not too much, just a little. Just a little sauce. Okay, as you can see, you're probably starting to run low on your sauce, which is fine. The sauce shouldn't come up more than halfway. Once you get to halfway in your pan, stop putting sauce in there. Um, it will, it will, you're gonna, you're gonna have more liquid in there as you go because this, these are gonna sweat, they're gonna release uh, water. So yeah, halfway, halfway. Now, 
we are going to do this last layer and then we are going to do one more layer of potato and cheese. And that final layer of cheese is gonna be our top. Then we're gonna pop it in the oven at 350 degrees. We're gonna jack it up to 375, uh, 380 depending on your oven. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna cover it with aluminum foil and we're gonna let it cook for 45 minutes to an hour depending on, again, your oven. Keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, after about 30 to 45 minutes, just take a look. Um, you can take a little knife and poke in. We'll get to that, we'll do it together. So just stay tuned. Okay, so we are ready. Let's take some aluminum foil. Heavy duty is what I prefer, but it doesn't have to be. It's just kind of like a lasagna, you kind of want to make like sort of a tent so like it doesn't stick to the cheese too much. So just kind of lift it like that. Reinf reinforce the sides. Let's get that on there. And then lift the center like this. But it's not really touching the cheese, but it's still covering. Ta-da, beautiful. I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so it's been an hour of baking time, then another, I'd say another 30 to 45 minutes of cooling time. And from there, you could do a couple of things. You can let it sit and cool and just leave it alone. And that's one way or you can let it sit and cool and as it, sit, as it starts to cool, you're gonna see like liquid on the sides. And that's because of the water that's, that came out of the uh, potatoes. And that is also because of the fat that came from the cheese. So what I do is as it's cooling, I take a paper towel and I just kind of dab it along the sides little by little. Give you a little demonstration here. You know, just like that and just hit the corners just ever so slightly. As it cools, it starts to puddle up in those corners. And then just real lightly, not too hard. And yeah, you'll see, you'll get little, little bits like that. So after your dish is completely cooled and ready to go, it shouldn't take more than 45 minutes, get a nice sharp knife and cut out the sizes you'd like. You know, I personally, I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna get a nice big slice. As you can see, it goes right through, no problem. There's still just a slight bit tug. It's cooked all the way, but it's still just got just a tiny bit of chew. I would almost say it's like al dente for potatoes, if, you know. So, slice yourself a nice piece. Um, serve it with some nice vegetables, a nice, your favorite protein. I have some nice um, coarsely chopped parsley here. Um, you can go finely chopped, but yeah, you know, just some nice chopped herbs. And uh, yeah, I just kind of go lightly over the top like that. Get a little color, but also just a little bit of flavor. Okay, once you're, once it's plated, ready to go, enjoy. I love this dish. Mmm, cheesy potatoes. Just enough, I mean, just enough bite on the potatoes. Like it's not a crunch or anything, just goes right through without being mush. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let's move on.